Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Chapter 23, Gauss law, problem number, six, uh, problem number 8. When a shower is turned on uh, in, in a closed bathroom, the splashing of the water on the bare tub can fill the room's air with the negatively charged ions and produces an electric field in air as, as great as 1000 uh, uh, newton per coulomb. So when you turn on your shower, um, uh, air, air droplets move down and when they hit the uh, tub surface, that produces uh, charge uh, because of the friction. So uh, electric field developed in the room uh, in the bathroom can be as high as 1000 newton per coulomb. So that's pretty high. Consider a bathroom with dimensions 2.5 meter cross 3 meter cross uh, uh, 2 meter along the ceiling floor and four walls approximate approximate the electric field in air as being perpendicular directly perpendicular to the surface and having a uniform magnitude of 600 uh, Newton per coulomb. So this is the approximation we are asked to use. Electric field at every point of the surface is 600 nano uh, Newton per coulomb. Okay, at every point of this uh, of the uh, walls of this uh, bathroom, uh, 600 nano uh, Newton per coulomb. And also for each surface, it is perpendicular to the uh, surface. So here, if we consider top surface, electric field is this way, perpendicular to the surface. If we consider right face, electric field is this way, perpendicular to the surface, perpendicular to the face. Uh, treat those surfaces are forming a closed Gaussian surface around the room's air. What are part A, the volume charge density and uh, part B, the number of excess elementary charges E per cubic meter in the room's air. Okay, so we had to find our charge density rho, and then we had to find our number of electrons per unit uh, uh, per unit uh, volume per unit volume. Okay, so uh, the important point is feel at every point of the surface of this cube is 600 newton per coulomb, and everywhere it is perpendicular to the surface. For the top surface, perpendicular to the surface. For the right face, perpendicular to the surface. Remember, direction of area is also always perpendicular to the surface. So it's also perpendicular to the surface. Area is also perpendicular to the surface. So that would mean at every point, field and area are in the same direction. Okay, field and area are in the same direction. Okay, now, area of this surface, total area, surface area of this cube will be twice right face and left face. If I consider right and left face, 3 cross 2, 3 into 2. So right face 3 into 2, left face 3 into 2. So twice 3 into 2. Plus if we consider top and bottom, okay, top and bottom, then twice 2.5 into 3, 2.5 into 3. Then if we consider uh, front face and the back face, now front face uh, side is 2.5 and 3, 2. Okay, this height is 2. So twice 2.5 into 2. Okay, 2.5 into 2. Now, this comes out to be, I already worked it out, 37 meters square. Okay, 37 meters square. So, uh, sum of area of all the faces is 37 meter square. Now, uh, flux. Flux through the cube. Since for all the surfaces, for all the faces, uh, field is perpendicular to the face, field and area are in the same direction. So, flux will be simply summation of... Uh, E into A for individual faces. Okay, E into A for A. Since E is having the same value at every point of the surface, be it top, bottom, right, left, front, or back, everywhere same 600 Newton per coulomb. So it's simply E into summation of A. And that summation of A is the total area of the cube, which is 37 meters square. So let's substitute E is 600, then area is 37. And this is, I have already worked it out, uh, 22,200 Newton meter square per coulomb. Okay, Newton meter square per coulomb. Now we have to find out charge density. For that, we'll first find out uh, charge enclosed by this cube. So, part A. Charge enclosed, Q enclosed. Now, charge enclosed from Gauss law, we already know is epsilon 0, phi through the cube, flux through the cube. 
epsilon 0 is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 and the flux through the cube we already found is 22,200 22,200 and since we are already asked that uh, air is filled with negatively charged ions, so charge enclosed is negative, so we have minus sign here, okay, minus sign. That means uh, field is inward, not outward, okay, field must be inward, perpendicular to the surface, but inward, perpendicular to the surface, but inward, okay. So, uh, this comes out to be minus, I have already again worked it out. 196470, 196470 into 10 to the power minus 12. So I'll just keep it li like this for a while. Coulombs. Now charge density, volume charge density. Therefore, volume charge density, which is simply total charge divided by total volume. Total charge is this thing minus 196470 into 10 to the power minus 12 and total volume, total volume is simply 2.5 into 3 into 2, 2.5 into 3 into 2 and this comes out to be uh, minus 1.31, minus 1.31 into 10 to the power, uh, into 10 to the power minus 8. Coulomb per meter cube. We have used everything in SI system, so we'll get SI system here. Coulomb per meter cube, not square, per meter cube. So this is charge density inside this room. One minus 1.31 into 10 to the power minus 8. Now we have to find out uh, part B, number of excess elementary charges E per cubic meter. Now part b number of excess elementary charges e we already know charge is equal to n into e or charge per unit volume which is charge density is number of uh, charges per unit volume into e so i'll just use n for the number of charges per unit volume so n is number of charges per unit volume n is equal to this is rho divided by e here n is number of charges per unit volume okay number of elementary charges per unit volume uh, charge per unit volume which is rho divided by e okay divided by e. now rho we have already found is 1.31 we'll just use the magnitude 1.31 into 10 to the power minus 8 and charge uh, e which is charge of uh, electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 so this implies n is equal to number of elementary charges per unit volume we are using charge here per unit volume so we'll get number of charges per unit number of elementary charges per unit volume so that comes out to be 8.2 8.2 into 10 to the power 10 into 10 to the power 10 charges per unit volume charges e per unit volume per unit volume. Is that fine? Okay, that'll do for this session.